Hey YouTube, this is Bronx Brothers Motorcycles. On today's video, we're going to be installing some thrash and supply floorboards on my 09 Electra Glide, aka Geezer Glide, aka Performance Bagger. Now, this is a built bike. It has a 107, previously a 96, but Let's get on with the video and I'll give you a breakdown of my bike first so that you'll see she's no regular gal. Well, what we have here is a 09 electric glide classic but that's how it started out life that's not where it's at presently it has a built 107 previously a 96 t-man heads pistons dark horse crank balanced and welded sns cam plate sns oil pump t-man push rods lifters Screaming Eagle Compensator. It's got a bunch of goodies. Uh, it was tuned by Brooke Cycle. Guy's a master at tuning. Believe it or not, this bike has 120 horsepower and 120 foot-pounds of torque. And it is pretty much streamlined. From about 1,500 RPMs, it shoots straight up. And it's linear. It goes all the way across. Uh, what else can I tell you about the bike? It has Roland Sands diesel cut wheels. It has custom dynamics lights throughout. It has a lot of them. It has this, the headlight. Uh, this is an Arlen Ness unit. Uh, custom dynamics lights everywhere. Olin suspension front and rear it has the cartridges in the front and it has the reservoir shocks in the rear it has a one-off custom seat it has gel had the whole seat made including the backrest as well as my razor backrest so uh the paint, I can tell you, and it's dirty right now, but this paint, I brought it back to life. Like I said, this is an 09, and if you've watched my previous videos, you probably saw me bring this paint back to life. It has metal flake galore. When I first purchased the bike, the guy had waxed it so much. It had layers of wax on it. You really couldn't see the metal flake coming through. At this point, it does. Uh, it's very dirty right now. I just got back from Florida, if you've been watching that series of videos. That was a very fun trip. Continuing on, we have a Bassani exhaust. We have a Trask air cleaner. I have the uh, bre external breather. So... I'm going to be changing this out, so follow along to a catch can. I don't like those hoses the way they show there. So I'm going to route those to the back, and I have a catch can I'm going to be putting on for that. Uh, Roland Sands. I forgot what they call those. Clear view something. But I have the transmission. I have the cam area. And I also have the clutch side of it. Uh, I love chrome. I have 12 inch. I have a Sony XAV7000 double DIN unit with CarPlay. Uh, this is a Metra inner fairing, which for this bike, as you know, it came with a single DIN radio. And I upgraded to this. It has six and a half inch Rockford Fosgate speakers. Uh, what else? It has so much stuff. Diamond cut engine fins. Now, I did this myself. That's eight hours worth of work. 
I did that with a Dremel. Uh, very time consuming, but it makes a big difference in appearance in my opinion. It doesn't look regular run of the mill. Give you an idea, this is stock. It has a Clockworks six inch windscreen, performance machine, fork legs. If you follow my channel, you know I had some drama with that. The first set I ordered, those are not cheap. Those fork legs and the first ones I ordered were uh, peeling. The chrome was peeling and I had to jump through some hoops to get that uh, replaced. And furthermore, I had to jump through some hoops to get the fork cartridges by Olin's done correctly. Uh, if you search back in some of my videos, you'll see. The handlebars, I will give these people credit, though I don't work with them anymore. Hill Country, when they do a good job, they do a good job. These are LA Choppers 12 inch. Uh, I forgot the name of these bars, but they're for an Electroglide. All chrome, everything chrome. Internal wiring, uh, this has everything. So uh, I am happy with the product. I'm not happy with the customer service. I must admit. Hand grips by Avon. Mirrors. These mirrors I got from, I can't remember where I got the mirrors from. Well, part of my problem right now is I put, about well, back in October, I put a lithium ion battery and these batteries are very tricky to work with you have to know what you're doing you have to have a special charger that has that is specific to lithium ion so i do have the regular connector but this battery comes with this type of connector let's see if i could find the with this and I don't have that piece. So I have just ordered it. It should come in tomorrow. This is what everybody else uses. This, this uh, connection here, everybody's familiar with. This one's a little bit different. But right now the battery is totally dead. That's why I have the seat off. I was trying to charge it, uh, but I have to wait for Amazon to bring me that plug so that I can charge the battery. And at this point, I'm gonna put the little pigtail so that I don't have to take the seat off anymore. I didn't do it when I ordered the battery. I should have ordered that piece and it, I wouldn't have to be dealing with it now. So what am I doing today now that I've given you a rundown on the bike? I have some thrash and supply floorboards coming in. I'm going to be replacing these floorboards to something a little bit more stylish, better looking. I've looked at so many different floorboards and thrashing has the quality that I'm looking for, the engineering that I'm looking for. And I'll tell you, once I install it, I'll tell you the benefits of the new boards. And I like the look because this is, you know, if I remove that, tour pack this is a performance bagger by all means uh, by the definition of the term this is a performance bagger so uh, all I have to do is take those lowers off take that tour pack and I have a performance looking bagger but I like the convenience of the tour pack as a youtuber I carry many cameras I carry a drone I have to carry tripods and a bunch of stuff my laptop to edit videos so let's give her a wash and then we're going to install the floorboards well those of you that follow my channel probably know i'm a little bit fanatical about uh washing my bikes the first thing that you saw was snow foam and what that does is it releases all of the uh, bigger dirt particles so that you're not scratching your paint your bike 
when you are washing it down with the towel. Uh, then when I'm washing it with the towel, I'm going in one direction that I always do when I wash my bike. I always wash it in the same method. If you see me wash the bat wing, I always go from right to left, from left to right. The other thing that you're seeing is you may see me go back to a certain areas, but I'm not scrubbing it, scrubbing it. If there's any bugs that get scratched, what I do is I soak them down. I let the soap do the work. The towel should not be scrubbing, scrubbing. And what happens is that you get these micro scratches every time you wash your bike. If you go to the dealer and you look at the new bikes, you see that their paint is flawless. That's because they haven't washed it. The other thing that you're seeing at the bottom of the screen is I have two buckets. One has soap and one is filled with regular clean water. And what that clean water bucket is for is to rinse my rag before I stick it back into the soap. So I get all of the dirt off of it before I re-soap the rag so that I'm not rubbing that dirt on everything. Now this here is a paint stick, a stirrer stick. And I use this to get into the top of the engine here the valve covers and you really can't reach your hand in there but if you use that stick you can do the valve covers really easy so here are the goodies I removed the old floorboards and I'm gonna put them side by side so that you see uh, the difference here so this is an unboxing Ration supply, and there it is, baby. That is the floorboard. It's quite big compared to the old one. Not sure if you can see that. I'm sure you can see that. So, I'm thinking, because this is, uh, they're adjustable. As you can see here, it has four, two settings. Well, actually three, because, watch. You can put these here, here, or here. So I'm gonna put it, I'm thinking, as far back as possible. It's kind of a mid control, even though it's not mid controls, but my foot, can be further back now I have more room and I have these highway bars right here these highway pegs whatever you want to call them uh, that I can rest my feet on long trips so I'm thinking I'm gonna go back is what I'm gonna do so that is the position that I want to take now I did clean the bike uh, came out very nice and I'm not sure if you can see the metal flake now. It's hard to see metal flake on paint. On camera, rather. But, I mean, before I washed it, you really couldn't see the metal flake because it was really dirty. Uh, but I gave it a good detail cleaning. Uh, the windscreen, the red still needs a little bit of detail but everything else came out. I cleaned the wheels really good, did everything. I wanted to tell you guys about this light. Let me talk to you about this light real quick. So I bought this light over at Costco. Comes with a stand. I think I paid $30 for it. Uh, you could take this thing camping. You use it in your backyard. You could use it to work on your car, work on your bike. It had so many uses. It comes with a tripod. It's uh, rechargeable. It lasts quite a, a bit. I'd say it lasts about maybe five hours. That's pretty decent. It has two different settings. Let's see if I can find the settings. There you go. It has two different light modes is what it is. So it is very helpful in situations like this. 
my garage is somewhat well lit but this area here as you can see I have no light over the garage door and I had those LED strips when I first painted this garage I did a two-tone the gray with the black you could barely see it now because my walls are all covered anyhow let's get on with it here so this is pretty uh, simple now I did do a mistake I took the floorboards off and all I needed to do it seems is remove the black brackets from the actual floorboard so not a big deal uh, it was a job that I didn't have to do but I'll take care of that now I'm gonna clean those black bars while I'm at it and yeah we'll go from there so let me get with it I don't think you need to see me do that so I bought this kit, it's a thread cleaner. Now this is packed with, uh, I'm not sure if you can see that, but it has a lot of Loctite on there. And what this does is it removes it. Yep, that's the size. So that's all it, it does is remove the Loctite. It cleans your threads out. So. And it's good for rusty bolts and things like that, nuts and bolts. So being that I'm going to be working on this FXR, that's an older bike, it did a, a really nice job. I think I paid 30 bucks for that on Amazon. I'll put a link down at the bottom, but it, it's a nice set. Let me show you. It has metric as well as uh, American standard. So... It has every size there is. So I'm cleaning the threads on both the nuts and bolts. And then I'm going to put everything together. A bolt this size, you use red thread lock. I'll show you the others. A bolt that size, you're using blue. That is the difference. You put red on that and you try to take it off. If it's too tight, you might break the bolt. So blue is enough to hold it in place. Think of it like that. If you put red on this, this is a substantial size bolt. You're not going to break it that easy. So red for a big bolt and blue for a smaller. And that goes for the engine as well doing one screw at a time to add the blue Loctite make sure these don't vibrate off now these products are billet aluminum CNC machine billet aluminum uh, which is what they're known for with their products. I wanted to dry fit this first and make sure that before I tightened it down that it was the right in the right position. I will torque it down just a tad more before calling it Before calling it done. You know there's other floorboards out there. But I just didn't like the style of them for this bike. It's. They were too blingy. The, the design of them was too. More for a custom bagger. More for a big wheel more for uh i don't know because i'm in between here between this being a a touring bike and 
This being a touring bike and a performance bagger, I'm in kind of in the middle here. I wanted to stay true to the uh, performance bagger side of it and not have it too blinged out. You know, the chrome is chrome. I mean, there's nothing I can do about that. And what I mean by that is, as far as, you know, making it blingy or not, and it's my preference, I love chrome. I did black out a bike once, and it came out nice, I liked it. I don't wanna strip it because this is aluminum, so you can't be too uh, aggressive. Now I will say this didn't bring any instructions whatsoever. Nothing, zero. Those are tight. You know, I love detailing my bike. I hate to see it dirty. And even when I detail it, that most people think it's super clean, I always find a few and I think you guys can probably relate. Uh, I can always find a few flaws with, with, with it. I'm looking at my exhaust right now, and I'm like, well, that could be cleaner. And it's pretty clean. But I'm a detail freak. Now, not always. I'm not, I'm not OCD either. So... But I just cleaned it, so I'm like, that little spot right there, I get that off. And I keep finding stuff. You know, this bike is an 09, but people see it and they like it. Now, I will say, my brother has a, a road glide, and his bike... If, if you haven't seen my brother's bike, go back a video or two. You'll see his bike. He has a Road Glide. It's a 2011, and it's a teal, uh, what do you call it? It's a matte teal. And everywhere we go, people walk up to his bike. They're like, that's a nice bike. So he steals the show. And the funny thing is, He's not in love with the paint. He's not in love with the color. He's like, it's all right. But everybody else loves it. It's a good looking bike. Uh, when he bought it, my brother always asked for my advice on bikes. Uh, he works construction. He said, you need to know about construction. Anything about construction, you call me. But. I think that might be too tight if the floorboard doesn't go down. He said, if I need to know about bikes, I call you. So he calls me about bikes and cars. Loves his cars. Yeah. That's good. It's in place. Solid. A piece of metal shaving on my my finger. Okay, let's take another look at it, and there you have it. I think it looks great. All right, Electro Glide update. Well, the battery is now on lithium, so it knows it's on lithium. That is great. Now, my understanding is. With these chargers, the think of it as being full and empty. The first half fills up quick, so it charges quick. This next portion takes forever. And from what I can see, that's what's happening. That's what's taking place. So 
there is progress. I'm going to have to charge this battery up frequently. So it's something I'm going to have to do every few weeks. That is the floorboard. I'm very happy with the way the floorboard came out. Floorboards, they give the bike a whole new, I mean, a really nice look, in my opinion. In my opinion, they give the bike a nice, more clean, chrome look. I mean, it looks, you know, it looks sharp. Uh, it's, it's quite a change, you know, and the way those little dots are they they provide a lot of bling so floorboard installation success battery uh fixed you can see there it's already crept up to 75 percent and here in a minute it'll be at 100 so everything's looking good the bike is clean as a whistle i just have to put that back seat back on there and that is it put the side covers the saddlebags now, for those of you who are following my FXR build, I've started the process, so that is my next video coming out. Uh, as you can see, well, I cleaned up the tools, but there are tools around there. I don't want to give any, any indication as to what's going on, but that's coming up. So, anyway, thank you all for watching the videos. I really appreciate everybody especially all the subscribers appreciate you guys watching the videos uh if you can comment where you're from just to get some conversation going i'm really curious where everybody's from if you don't know i live in virginia beach virginia and i know there's people from pretty much all around the world that watch these videos so uh yeah, and if you haven't subscribed, if you happen upon this channel and you haven't subscribed, consider doing so. Give the video a like. Help me out. Help a brother out. You know what I'm saying. All the uh, YouTube stuff. Uh, I have a lot of projects still to go, but I start, started with that one. That's complete. And that's it. You all take care. Watch out with the crazy people on the roads. And I will catch you on the next one. Adios.